How's everyone doing? Today I'll be reviewing See No Evil 2. And if you've seen See No Evil 2, definitely let me know what you think about it as well. And See No Evil 2 is produced by the WWE and directed by the Sasuke sisters, and it stars Danielle Harris and Catherine Isabel. The movie starts out the same night right after the first See No Evil movie, and everybody's dead and being taken to the morgue, and Amy works at the morgue, and she's played by Danielle Harris, and it's her birthday. And instead of going out to celebrate for her birthday, she decides to stay and help out at the morgue because of all the bodies coming in from the Blackwell Hotel. So all the bodies of everyone killed from the first movie go to the morgue along with the body of Jacob Goodnight played by Kane. So since Amy decided to not go out and celebrate her birthday and stay and help out at work, her friends decide to surprise her and come to the morgue and celebrate her birthday there. And of course there has to be something to prevent them from using their cell phones with modern technology and you know being able to contact for help and in this movie they decide to put everybody's cell phones into a safe so they won't be disturbed while at work. And Catherine Isabel plays the macabre and serial killer obsessed friend Tamarin and she wants to go see the body of Jacob Goodnight. She's kind of obsessed with that. She read up all about him and so her and her boyfriend go down there to another section of the morgue where the body of Jacob Goodnight is and she decides to get a little freaky and then her and the boyfriend start having sex right next to the body of Jacob Goodnight and you know you're watching them hooking up and then all of a sudden you pan over and suddenly the body of Jacob Goodnight is gone. I don't care if you are having sex with hot ass Catherine Isabel, you are definitely going to notice when a 7 foot giant that's on a metal slab next to you gets up and walks away. And then as soon as they notice that his body is gone, the power goes out. It's completely dark, they're trapped inside the morgue, they can't get out, so that really heightens the tension even more. So from there, of course, it's an all-out slash and stalk battle of survival. And in this movie, the now one-eyed Jacob Goodnight decides to wear a burn patient's mask, which is kind of a translucent mask with leather straps around the head, which really makes him look even creepier. See No Evil 2 has a very dark and washed out look and hue to the movie, which really reflects the bleak tone to the film. It's a self-aware film with some of the horror cliches with the mentioning of not splitting up and terrible hiding spots, and I really like the score from the Newton brothers. It really heightens the tension all throughout the film. And I really like the pairing of Daniel Harris and Catherine Isabel, two of horror's most beautiful and talented modern scream queens. Overall, I like the cast as a whole. Everybody played their parts just perfectly. You've got the flirtatious floozy. You've got the shy guy who's got a crush. You've got uh, the overprotective brother who's really kind of a douchebag. And as soon as you meet him, you are kind of hoping for his demise right away. And in the beginning of the movie where they're talking about the Blackwell Hotel murders in the news, they mention a lot more bodies were found, several dozen bodies in uh, different forms of decay. And they think that the murders are related to the God's Hand killings as well, which also reminds me of the movie Frailty with the God's Hand killer there. And I think religious fanaticism is a great mechanism for serial killers. There are some awesome horror scenes in here, and the morgue is a fantastic setting for a horror movie. It did a really good job of capturing that feeling of isolation, being trapped inside with the power cut off and them not being able to escape. And with all the winding hallways and corridors, it felt like an endless maze. I love the match scene in the dark. It kind of reminded me a bit of The Conjuring. It's very stylistically shot as well. It started off with a really good mixture of action slash and then, you know, chase sequences and long shots of the hallway that kind of build up that suspense a little bit. I definitely think the kill scenes could have been a lot better. There's way too many scenes of Jacob Goodnight strangling people, choking them, and you know, lifting them up off the ground and throwing them around. We get it, Kane. You're strong. <laughs> but there's way too many scenes like that. It gets a bit redundant. Uh, but there are some good kill scenes here, some really good uh, blood splatter as well. One thing I'll say, too, uh, towards the middle of the movie, you know, they know that Jacob Goodnight is alive and he's killing people and they've seen some of the dead bodies already. And they're just kind of like walking towards trying to get out of there. If that was me and I knew somebody was trying to kill me, I would turn into Carl Lewis and bolt out of there as quick as I could. The slow-mo glass jar shattering towards the end of the movie seemed really out of place and unnecessary and really didn't add anything to that scene. With all the weapons around in the morgue that especially Jacob Goodnight utilizes, it seems like some of the other characters could find something to defend themselves with or find better weapons as well. And that just wasn't the case here, which is another thing that kind of bothered me. There's a lot of different horror cliches that they do point out, but they also fall victim to. It seems like the morgue is an emotional purgatory for Jacob Goodnight. There's a lot of flashbacks of his mother torturing him, and then him torturing other people, and he seems really conflicted, but he always goes back to his murderous ways. 
And Catherine Isabel plays her character very over the top. She's definitely hamming it up here. But her character provides a lot of entertainment and it's fun to watch her run around and just act crazy. While there are a couple good kills here with some good blood splatter, overall the script and kills are generic and feel uninspired. I loved the first See No Evil movie, and I thought it was one of the best WWE produced films along with The Condemned and No One Lives, and I've liked everything that the Sasuke sisters have done prior, so I was really looking forward to this film. The cast, score, and setting here were fantastic, but the movie was too derivative and needed to do something more to stand out. It needed better kills, better gore, and there are certain scenes in particular where you felt like there's going to be some good gore and it just kind of stopped and it just kind of lost that momentum. And the movie as a whole needed better pacing. It started out really strong and then just kind of hit a brick wall. There's way too much hiding and running around halls and corridors and people trying to open up gates and lock doors. It turned out to be a standard by the number slasher and honestly I was getting a little bit bored towards the end of the movie. I do praise the film for the unexpected moment towards the end of the movie, but overall I was expecting more from the Sasuke sisters' first studio film. I was really into the film in the beginning. I liked the cast interaction. I liked the cast in general. Like I said before, the setting was great with the morgue, uh, very creepy and effective, and the score was really tense and palpable. But overall, it was just a very generic slasher, and it was disappointing. I was expecting more from it. Overall, I give See No Evil 2 a 6 out of 10 stars, and if you've seen See No Evil 2, definitely let me know what you think of it as well. Leave me a comment or video response down below. Hope everyone's doing well. Take care. Blah, blah.